So fun fact about me, I like to write fiction. And I have found LLMs to be absolutely invaluable in my work, mainly because they are fantastic idea generators. The problem I have found is that when I'm asking for suggestions, I typically have to provide a lot of context first, like a okay, I've got these two nations at war and so-and-so killed so-and-so's brother, but then somebody was in love with the other person and they blah, 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 right? And I have to give a bunch of context before I ask for suggestions. Wouldn't it be nice if I just had an AI tool that just knew about my story? So that is what we're gonna try and build today. Here's the plan. Typically, when you want to supplement an AI model with information that it wasn't trained on, like a story you're writing, you would reach for RAG. So with RAG, you break your data into chunks and then store it in a vector database, and that makes it easy to do a quick search for the information you're looking for. This is great for things like documentation, but kind of falls flat when you have narrative content because stories are not just collections of facts, right? They're interconnected. And that kind of gets lost when you're just doing simple semantic search. So I came up with a new idea. I'm gonna keep a living document that dynamically fetches the new chapters that I'm writing, summarizes them, and creates a timeline of the full story. Additionally, I'm gonna have a database of all the characters and all of this information I'm just gonna store in Notion because I happen to write my stories in Notion and they've got like an API. I feel like Notion should be paying me money. So in the end, I want to use all of that metadata as context for anything that I ask Claude. And I'm not going to copy and paste that in. I'm actually going to dynamically add that as context for Claude using an MCP server. Okay, so let's get started. I have a fake novel that I generated three chapters of uh, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, don't generate novels at home, kids. This is not a good idea. Why would you even do that? But uh, it's the novel is called Red Hood Rising. Uh, it's a space western based on Little Red Riding Hood. I think that's kind of a rad story. So I've got these chapters and you know, I had this idea of having a timeline of all the chapters, but I think that if I just have a summary associated with each chapter, that will be pretty, like that's, that's enough. I also created another database, just, I mean, it's just the characters, right? So I've got, it'll have the name of the characters, the relationships, their, their sort of arc and then their personality. I don't know if this is too much information to pass into the context. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, so this is my prompt. I'm working on an AI fiction writing assistant. All my chapters are stored in a Notion database. As I update the chapters, I want to periodically update the chapter summary so that I can quickly see the timeline of the story. I want to use uh, an anthropic model to read through the chapter and update the summary field on that chapter in the Notion database. I know I'm being like extra repetitive here, I, but like my, I have a paranoia of it really not understanding me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm probably being too verbose here. Okay. Additionally, as chapters are updated, uh, I want another notion database to be updated. This catalogs all the characters along with things like their personalities, relationships, etc. For now, I'm fine running these updates manually with a script or something. Let's see what it suggests. Okay, so it's trying to do something, but it finds that it's in the root directory. It makes so many assumptions. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I need to just stop it right here. <laughs> okay. It was getting really tripped up by uh, where to create the project and stuff. So I'm telling it, okay, please put this project inside of my dev slash Annie Babani slash name of, name of project directory, right? You can make up the folder name. Let's see if we can help it out a little bit. Okay, naturally it's making a little Python app. I don't love working in Python. Oh my gosh, it's taken forever. You okay, bud? You know, one thing about using LLMs to generate code is that every now and then, even the best of these tools will get a little stuck and I have to, I feel like you have to do the, the coding version of like taking the game out and blowing on the cartridge. <laughs> I'm gonna stop it and just be like, Hey, you okay, buddy? Oh, it's real confused. Buddy, are you there, buddy? The last time I built an app with an LLM, it did not, it did not trip up on itself this much. What is happening? 
Did it just start going again, even though I didn't tell it to? Stop. What is happening? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Sometimes cursor gets stuck on Python, and I do not understand why. I do not. Un it, it'll just like hit a point, and it's just like, we're done. We're done. I, ugh, okay. I'm sorry. It is freaking out right now. I need to quit cursor. This is ridiculous. All right. Cursor is losing it. Quit. I can't even quit cursor. What is happening? Okay. This is, mm -mm. nope. I'm not waiting on this stuff. Force quit. Sorry. That's what you get. That's embarrassing cursor. Unable to resolve your shell environment in a reasonable time. Please quit. What happened? What happened? What did you do? Oh my gosh, it's back. Okay, whoa, that was weird. Have y'all run into that? Okay, whatever, we're starting over. This is not a great start, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna add my prompt again. <laughs> okay, so I've given it a slightly modified um, prompt. Basically, I'm saying the same thing. I also told it that for now, I'm fine running this as a script. Please use the latest version of Node and TypeScript. Um, the latest version of Node can handle, or excuse me, can process TypeScript natively, so you shouldn't need to install other TS dependencies. Okay, let me explain why I'm adding this. So it has only been in the past like couple of months that Node added TypeScript support, and it's just in like the latest versions. And I have found that uh, many of these models don't know that yet. And yes, I asked it to switch to TypeScript because I don't, I don't like Python, y'all. I just don't like working in dynamically typed languages. Okay, so it's creating a little thingy thingy. Ah, uh, see, okay, listen, listen, listen. Urgh, this is so annoying. It installed TS Node even though it does not need to. Um, blah blah blah. It's using OpenAI. That's fine. Blur, blur, blur. I don't know that I like the way it's doing this. This feels overly complex, but we're gonna run with it and we're just gonna see how it goes. We are not making as much progress as I had hoped. I don't think this is gonna work. I updated the package.json to specify this version of node so that I wouldn't have to use that TS node package like I said. Okay, cool, I think all is well. Let's try npm run dev. Let's we'll see what happens. Oh my God, I'm going to murder Claude. All right, so he's saying, listen, here's the problem. You removed T, Claude is mansplaining to me. That's what's happening. I'm rejecting all of this. You are wrong. You are wrong. Let me just use node. So how are we gonna fix this? I need to ask Claude to try again, but I need it to know that the issue is not TS node because this model is clearly not up to date with node. So what I have done is I have copied a blog post that talks about, hey, you can actually, you can do this now. Boop, I've just pasted the entire blog post in, into my context window. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I know, of course I'm right. Okay, so it worked, but I'm getting an error, but at least it's not, the same error. All right, it's just saying could not find database with ID. Oh, I know what I did. I forgot to um, <clears throat> I forgot to add the integration to my database, so I need to do that in Notion. Uh, okay, so we've got this class that we're defining. This is not how I would do it, but I'm also not much for object-oriented programming. Everything about object-oriented programming is feels very old school to me, but I don't hate this. This is fine. Let's just give it a whirl. Okay, it failed. Uh, what is the issue? Could not find sort property with name or ID. So this is to be expected. This happened last time I worked with Notion to build an app. Uh, you know, it doesn't know the structure of my data. So that's, that's totally fair. Uh, let's give that a go. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's sort of doing something, but it's not able to read the content. So let's see. Okay, so here's the problem. It's it's thinking that there's a content field, which there's not, there's just a page because a row in a database can actually just be a page. Notion's kind of weird like that, so I'm gonna correct it. Okay, so here I am explaining to Claude that uh, my data is not stored in a content uh, field, it's stored in the actual page, which is, you know, the rows for each database. So I'm explaining that to it. In Notion, basically every paragraph in an, on a Notion page is considered a block, but they're not always paragraphs. I think 
They can be other things. I think you can even insert like a view of a database and that's considered a block. Um, Notion experts will correct me on this, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's sort of the issue. Okay. Interesting. It's actually trying to convert the, the text in the block, uh, to markdown. I, I don't think it needs to do that though, but let's just see if this is working. It's thinking it's think. Oh, updating chapter summary. Ah! Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Okay. Let's go to notion. I'm going to lose my mind if it worked. Oh my God, it worked. Yes, this is fantastic. Okay, let's see, did it do anything with the characters? No, nothing with the characters yet. Where are we at? Okay, so it didn't manage to update the character database, but that's okay. I don't think I updated the properties um, on that database. So let's go ahead and update that now. I gotta open up Notion. I forgot what, what my fields were. Name, relationships, arc, personality. I think that's good. Let's try this again. Oh my gosh, it's adding the characters. Let's let's see. Is it working? Is it working? Ah! So now I need to create an MCP server. What is this going to look like? Let's let's talk to Claude and let's think this out. Okay, so this is what I've got. Uh, the script is working well. Now I want to use all this to create an MCP server to use with Claude Desktop. Basically, I want an MCP server that can fetch all this metadata and use it for as context for any prompt. I give Claude, excuse me, about the, about my story. Here's the information I want the MCP server to retrieve from Mo from Notion as a JSON object. And then I kind of just made like a sample version here. Okay, let's try this. I don't know how it's gonna structure my project. Okay, so let's see what is, it is suggesting. There are so many classes, good Lord. Okay, so it made this Claude desktop config. Okay. Hi, it's actually the next day. I, I had a coffee crash. Anyways, let's keep going. So uh, I've got this fiction assistant MCP server and I've added my environment variables to this. I feel like there's probably a safer way of doing this rather than just hard coding them in here. But anyways, if I were to try this, oh no, server disconnected. Okay, so let's see, how do we debug this? Okay, so according to the docs, We've got a few tools, it looks like. Let's look at the server log. So it's saying it doesn't know this file extension. I wonder if it's not using the right version of Node or something. Oh, this is an interesting suggestion to provide the exact path to Node. Okay, we can try that. Okay, restarting Claude. Mm. Okay. New error, but let's see. Unknown command node. Okay, so Claude is saying it doesn't have the full ASDF environment loaded. Okay, so actually use the direct path. Okay, well, let's try it. Oh, new error, this is great. Okay, okay, so it's asking for an open API, excuse me, an open AI key. That's, okay, I can fix that. That's, that's easy peasy. Let's try this again. I don't see any errors. Okay, okay, oh my gosh, where do I start? All right, let's see. What is my story Red Hood Rising about? I'm gonna lose my shit if it works. No, it should be in Notion. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so this is interesting. So it doesn't know about like the specific title of my story, probably because that's like not information about, <gasps> it's working. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is, ah! Woo, I am losing my shit. Setting in premise, the story takes place in the dangerous crimson canyons of uh, Kelper 452C, where your protagonist Ruby navigates a hostile environment on her hover bike. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. This is so great. I am absolutely thrilled by this. And now I'm going to implement this for my real story, my non fake fiction story. I can't believe this worked. This is amazing. My only concern is will the summaries 
and all the character information, will that be too much information to add as context? Like right now I'm actually working on the script for a comic book and that's decidedly shorter than say like a novel. But if I was doing a novel, like, I don't know, is that gonna be too long? Who knows, but I think this is a great start. So I'm gonna leave you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was so much fun. I ran into way more problems than I was expecting, but also the things that I thought would trip me up uh, actually didn't, so that's pretty cool. So anyways, let me know if you guys have app ideas that you'd like to see me fumble around and build using LLMs. I hope this was entertaining and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.